<clears throat> so this is one of my favorite um, studies that I go to every every so often. Mostly I do it at least once a week because it's, it's a really good study to get your tone and your fingers in the right place. So just to just to give an idea on how I work on it. So I want to make sure that uh, the fingers and the elbow and the shoulder in the right hand and the right arm is all very, very soft. So all of this needs to be super soft. Uh, to be able to put the, the deep tone into, into the strings, really heavy. So at the very beginning, especially in the G string, we want to work on getting it with small bow, but really into the string. And the more flexible your fingers are, and the more you use them, the more you can go into the string. Also for the string crossing. There's a lot of string crossing in this piece. The fingers help to go from the top the top strings to the bottom strings. So that's one thing. Um, and the other thing of course is for the left hand. Um, it goes into all sorts of different keys and all sorts of different shapes and patterns of fingers. So it's really useful just to get the hand in the right place. It's also quite um, easy to get your hand, your left hand, quite stiff. So we need, I, I need to keep reminding myself to loosen up the fingers because um, especially when it gets a little bit more complicated like or those high high fingers extensions I want to make sure that your fingers are nice and stretched but also soft at the same time um, I think it's a great study to get intonation and sound. And one of the ways I work on the sound is I just lift one of the fingers of the bow. So for example, I'm gonna start with this. So that's one way of practicing the other three fingers on the bow. What kind of, um, what's the way that they best work on the bow hold? Trying to get the same sound. Then change. to do in the bow. What's the best way to use the fingers in the bow? Once you've done all the combinations you can, then making sure that everything is nice and soft will we'll, we'll be much more now. Let's see how the sound has changed. And then we can just do that for the entire piece, or we can use different sections. There will be sections that are more complicated, like in the second page, when it goes into all sorts of sharps. So you can use, when you practice those bits that are tricky, 
Use also this for getting the nice sound out of the out of the bow and out of the violin. So these are some of my um, work on the tone using this exercise, this study from Dante.